This side table is a super easy project that any DIYer will be able to build. It's made from one 1x10 one board at around 6 feet long and I decided to use oak but you can use pine, use whatever you want to use. I only used oak because I wanted to try out a ceruzed oak finish which um, is only able, you're only able to do with woods that have an open grain. So I just marked my cuts and I used a straight edge to use to run my circular saw against and just made all the cuts. You only need a circular saw, a drill, and a sander for this project. It's just a really, really easy project. There's just five cuts and then that's it. Just five pieces. There you have it. And um, I like to do a lot of my finishing work before assembly. I just mark it up with a pencil. That way I know that I'm sanding evenly. This is the first time that I'm actually using this Ryobi sander. They sent it over and it's really helpful having a cordless sander. It's, it was really great to use. I wish you could actually hear the music that I'm listening to though. It's definitely a lot better than this song that's playing over here. <laughs> so on to the serucing. Um, in order to open up the grain and the wood, you need to use a brass bristle brush. And after you do that, you um, have to raise the grain, which means just put, wiping some water on it and letting it dry. This will create, the, it'll make the wood like fuzzy, and then you just wipe it down with uh, 220 sandpaper to just knock down those fuzzies. So when you sand the end grain, you want to sand it higher than any of the other grips that you're using to avoid um, too much absorption into the end grain. So I'm using that aniline dye. It comes in a, powder, uh, a powder form and you just put it in water overnight or for a few hours and it's a super easy process. It's wipe on and wipe off. And um, see all those like holes in the wood there? That's from the brass bristle brush and that's where the serucing comes in. That's where the white color will sit. It's important to use dye and not stain because stain sits on top of the wood and will fill those holes. You don't want them to be filled. You wanna leave them empty to make room for the wax that's gonna be filled in them. So now I just um, started to assemble. I just put on some glue and I use these clamps um, because I had them, but you don't need to use them. You could just use any sort of clamp or anything to hold it in place. Just make sure the board's in the center. And I have more detailed instructions on my website. I'll have the link down below with all the measurements and everything. All right, armed and ready. Um, so I marked out where um, the center of the board was and where the board was on the other side. And I just pre-drilled and uh, attached everything with screws. I know that this is not the most advanced method of joinery out there, but this is just an easy, simple DIY project that someone can just tackle on their own. Next, I started assembling the shelf. Uh, again, I'm using these clamps, but you don't need to use them. You can just use any sort of clamps. And I pre-drilled again and screwed it all down. I think I used um, shorter screws here, like inch and a half screws, because there was gonna be screws coming in from the other side and you do not want them to meet. So once I got that all screwed down, I made sure it was square. And I clamped it to the top piece and marked out where the top would go. That's just, just in case your measurements are off, it's just, it, it lines it up perfectly. And I, see this is another way how you could clamp something at a right angle. You take a square like that and you just clamp from the top and the side. So for the top, I was planning on plugging the holes made by the screws with um, a brass rod. So I had to tackle it a little differently. First I just drilled a, like, like a skinny little bit and then I used a brad point bit um, at the same diameter of the rod that I had. So a little tip with the brad point, um, first you go um, backwards to just like score the wood and then you go regular way and then you won't have any tear out. So I did that for the bottom of the shelf here as well. So you just used a skinny little bit, I don't remember what size. And then use that brad point bit with that same method. First a little bit backwards just to score the wood and then just go regular. I use the tape there as a depth stop for um, the brass plug that I was gonna put in. Just screw it all down. So I actually plan on doing all the finishing before assembly, like the whole serucing process and everything. And I'm really happy that I did it because I made some mistakes and I had to sand down everything again. So I'm happy I started with this one layer. So now I screw it all down and finish. Put on another layer of the dye. And yes, I realize I am wearing socks with flip flops. 
deal with it, <laughs> whatever. So you have to wait 24 hours for, for the dye to dry before you can seal it. So after putting it on, you just wipe it all off with a cloth. You don't want to leave any extra on it because it'll, it'll just sit on top of the wood and not get absorbed into the wood and it'll leave like a powdery residue. So you just let it dry overnight and then come back to it the following day. So now I decided to use the brass um, rod to fill in the holes. You could just use anything you want. You can use wood filler, you can use um, a dowel. I decided to go with brass and do it the hard way. So I thought I was going to protect the table by putting all that tape on there. I was sad, ah, who remembers that from Instagram? So anyway, um, I started going at it with a hacksaw and it took forever, like a really, really, really long time just to cut one of these little plugs. I was like, this is not gonna work and it totally messed up the table, like look at that. And with this finish, you see every little detail, not good. So I was like, all right, let me put in the brass and mark it off and then clamp it down and cut it with a Dremel. So that was actually a pretty good idea. After you cut, you need to find the piece and make sure you're wearing gloves because those things are, are hot. I used some super glue and got it in. It wasn't the right size and that's where the whole mess up happened. So I got a little better as it was going on with the measuring and, and see that one's like more flush with the with the actual surface. So as it was going on, I got better, but the top pieces, I needed to just take my belt sander and go to town and refinish the whole top. The brass sands so nicely, it was so easy to flush it up to the top just using the belt sander. So I refinished the whole top and everything with the dye again, and then I just used the tack cloth to wipe it all down to get off all the powdery residue. On to the next step. You need to seal in the dye before you put in the wax, and in order to do that, you use de-waxed shellac. Not regular shellac, de-waxed shellac. There's some sort of chemical reason why you need to use the de-waxed version that I don't fully understand, but it is very important. The shellac dries really fast, so I did two light coats and then I used the liming wax. Uh, it's by Brywax, Bri I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'll put a link down below. And um, I saw some tutorial where they said to rub off the excess with um, a steel wool, and that really wasn't working out so well. So I was, it was going to take forever. So I did some Googling and Google told me that I can use mineral spirits to wipe off the excess. So that was working phenomenally. Um, it was cleaning up really well. The white color was staying in the green and the wax was just coming right off of the blue color because I sealed it with the de-waxed shellac. And see how all like the haze is coming off? The last and final step is to seal it. The liming wax does not seal it, so you need to put on um, another wax on top of it. This is called microcrystalline wax. And it's kind of like paste wax, only it's finer and it dries like harder, I think. So like museums all around the world use this stuff to preserve all of their antiques and every all their exhibits and everything. And wipe on, wipe off, probably the easiest uh, finish I've ever put on and you just buff it away with a cloth and you're done. And it has like this, you just want to touch it. It has like a really soft feel to it. I love that the shelf is just the perfect size for remote controls or a phone, whatever. Leave it over the arm of the couch, put a book, a drink, something to rest on it, or you could pull it up to the couch and put a laptop on it, uh, put your meal in it and tell anybody. So I hope you enjoyed and um, don't forget to subscribe. There'll be more videos like this.